The Toronto Raptors are among one of the youngest teams in the NBA. The franchise was established in 1995. The Toronto Raptors are the only Canadian team in the NBA. They played three home games at Cops Coliseum and six home games at Maple Leaf Gardens and most of their home games at the Rogers Center, which was called the Sky Dome, before it was changed back in 2005. They played 117 games there. They shared the stadium with the Toronto Blue Jays and the Toronto Argonauts until moving to the Air Canada Center where they currently play since 1999. The Air Canada Center opened on February the 19th, 1999. As anyone would expect, they struggled because they were a new team for a few years between the years 1995 to 1998, but that would change suddenly when this particular player was drafted fifth overall in the 1998 NBA draft. When you think of the Toronto Raptors, you have one person that comes to mind, and that person is Vince Carter. Because of the highlight dunks and what he's done when he was playing for Toronto, and the success that they had as a new franchise that was a few years old, he's influenced a lot of kids that were born and grew up in Canada. The main focus while I was growing up in Toronto was Vince Carter. You know, he was on TV, on commercials, he was doing everything in the dunk off. But even though he wasn't from Canada, he was a face of Canada basketball. Even Kevin Durant wanted to play for the Toronto Raptors because of Vince Carter. Who did you grow up wanting to play for? Um, believe it or not, I wanted to play for the Toronto Raptors. Uh, that was my favorite team growing up. <laughs> Why? I, I was a big Vince Carter fan. Coming from completely out of America, Kevin Durant was born in Washington, D.C. This video is not only about Vince Carter's influence. I'm here to end the debate on who the better Raptor is once and for all. Once again, it's Third IV195 coming at you with my intellect and stay tuned. Before we fully get into the comparisons, I have to make this clear. Vince Carter is one of my top 10 favorite players of all time. DeMar DeRozan is in my top 5 favorite current list, so there's no bias in this comparison. This is how we're going to break it down. We are going to be looking at offense, defense, franchise records, playoff success, awards, and stuff outside of basketball. Scoring. When Vince Carter came into the league, he dominated from the jump. In his rookie season, he averaged 18.3 points per game, shooting 28.8% from the three-point line and 45% from the field. Vince played 35.2 minutes per game in his rookie season. In DeRozan's rookie season, he averaged 8.6 points per game, shooting 25% from the three-point line and 49.8% from the field, playing just 21.6 minutes. You can try and make an argument that the reason why Vince Carter scored more is because he played more minutes, but DeRozan just wasn't as impactful as Vince Carter was coming into the league. For example, we all know as NBA fans that Kobe's compared to either Michael Jordan or LeBron James a lot. Even Kobe himself wasn't as impactful coming into the league in his rookie season. He averaged 7.6 points per game, playing 15 and a half minutes, but look at the player he grown into. He became one of the greatest NBA players of all time. When Michael Jordan came into the league, in his rookie season, he averaged 28.2 points per game, playing 38.3 minutes per game. And in LeBron's rookie season, he averaged 20.9 points per game, playing 39 and a half minutes per game. So there you go. Not every Everyone is impactful their first year. In Vince's sophomore season, he averaged 25.7 points per game, improving his three-point shot percentage to 40.3% and shot 46.5% from the field, playing 38.1 minutes per game. DeRozan improved a lot his sophomore season. He averaged 17.2 points per game, shooting 9.6% from the three-point line and 46.7% from the field, playing 34.8 minutes per game. In Vince's third season, he averaged 27.6 points per game, shooting 40.8% from the three-point line improving by 0.5% from his sophomore season and 46% from the field. In DeRozan's third season, his points per game averaged dipped by 0.5%. He averaged 16.7 points per game and 2 assists per game. He shot 26.1% from the three-point line and 42.2% from the field. Vince suffered from injuries in his fourth season and was only able to play 60 games. In the 60 games that he played during the 2000-2001 season, he averaged 24.7 points per game, shooting 38.7% from the three-point line and 42.8% from the field. In DeRozan's fourth season, he averaged 18 points per game, shooting 30.5% from the three-point line and 42.9% from the field. Due to knee injuries that Vince was suffering from, he was only able to play 43 games in his fifth season. He missed most of the first half of the season. He missed 39 games. In the 43 games that he played in the 2002-2003 season, he averaged 24.7 points per game, shooting 34.4% from the three-point line and 46.7% from the field, playing 34.2 minutes per game. In DeRozan's fifth 
season, he averaged 22.7 points per game, shooting 30.5% from the three-point line and 42.9% from the field. In Carter's sixth season, he averaged 22.5 points per game, shooting 38.3% from the three-point line and 41.7% from the field, playing 38.2 minutes per game. In DeRozan's sixth season, he averaged 20.1 points per game, shooting 28.4% from the three-point line and 41.3% from the field. In Vince Carter's last and final season with the Toronto Raptors, playing only 20 games before being traded to the New Jersey Nets, Vince averaged 15.9 points per game, shooting 32.2% from the three-point line and shot 41.1% from the field. Vince took a dip in statistics due to some issues he was having with Sam Mitchell, the coach at the time for the Toronto Raptors, and he was also benched during fourth quarters in his last days as a Raptor because Sam Mitchell was enforcing new philosophies to the team to show Carter how things are newly done, so his stats suffered for it because Vince didn't agree with the way things were newly done. In DeRozan's sixth season, he only played 60 games because he slipped and tore his abductor longest tendon trying to score the basketball. He missed 22 games. It's clear that Vince Carter is the better scorer. DeRozan spent a longer time with the Raptors and still hasn't scored more than Vince Carter in a season. The most he scored in his career was this past 2016 to 2017 season where he averaged 27.3 points per game. There's still room for DeRozan because he's entering his ninth season with the Raptors so there's a possibility he can pass Vince Carter in some areas. If Vince Carter never suffered knee injuries in his career, he would have done even more spectacular things as a Raptor, but unfortunately, the knee injuries held him back. Defense. In Vince Carter's rookie season, he averaged 1.1 steals per game and 1.5 blocks per game. In his sophomore season, he averaged 1.3 steals per game and 1.1 blocks per game. In his third season, he averaged 1.5 steals per game and 1.1 blocks per game. And in his fourth season, he averaged 1.6 steals per game and 0.7 blocks per game. In his fifth season, he averaged 1.1 steals per game and 1 block per game. In his sixth season, he averaged 1.2 steals per game and 0.9 blocks per game. Before Vince was traded after 20 games into the season, with the Raptors in his final years, he averaged 1.3 steals per game and 0.8 blocks per game. DeRozan. In DeRozan's rookie year, he averaged 0.6 steals per game and 0.2 blocks per game. In his sophomore season, he averaged 1 steal per game and 0.4 blocks per game. In his third year, he averaged 0.8 steals per game and 0.3 blocks per game. In his fourth year, he averaged 0.9 steals per game and 0.3 blocks per game. In his fifth season, he averaged 1.1 steals per game and 0.4 blocks per game. In his sixth season, he averaged 1.2 steals per game and 0.2 blocks per game. Vince Card is clearly the better defender, so I give him the edge on defense as well franchise records. Vince Carter scored the most points in franchise history. He scored 51 points. He did this back on February the 27th in the year 2000. Until former Raptor Terrence Ross tied his record when he scored 51 points against the Los Angeles Clippers on January the 25th, 2014. Vince was also the first person in franchise history to score 48 points until Charlie Villanueva scored 48 points on March the 26th, 2006. Those two records are still Vince Carter's records in my opinion because he's the original person to set them. Until you pass them, he still owns them. Vince is the only person in franchise history to have a 47 point game, a 46 point game, a 45 point game, and a 44 point game. He also holds the franchise record for having the most 43 point games in franchise history. He also holds the franchise record for having the most points scored in a season with 2,107 points. Vince leads the franchise in career points per game average with 23.4 points per game. After 8 seasons with the Toronto Raptors, DeRozan has a career average of 19.3 points per game. So that goes to show how lethal Vince Carter was as a scorer. His points per game average is higher than DeRozan's and he only spent six and a half years in Toronto. Vince also leads a franchise in points per game average in a season, scoring 27.6 points per game. DeRozan is second after scoring 27.3 points per game during this past season. Vince Carter also holds the record for the most points scored in a playoff game, scoring 50 points against the Philadelphia 76ers back on May the 11th, 2001. Vince Carter has a higher point per game average in the playoff than DeMar DeRozan does and leads a franchise with 25.67 points per game in the playoffs with a total of 385 points scored and playing 15 games in the playoff in just two playoff appearances. DeRozan is second in the franchise with an average of 21.71 points per game scoring 890 points in four playoff appearances in 41 games. Vince also has the highest points per game average in a single playoff with 27.25 points per game. DeRozan leads the franchise in field goals and free throws made. DeRozan is also the first person in franchise history to make the most free throws in a game with 24 made. He leads the franchise with the most free throws made in a season. DeRozan also leads the franchise with the most seasons and playoff games played. He has the most playoff points scored in the playoffs in franchise history. DeRozan is also the first person in franchise history to score 20 points in the first quarter in a playoff game. He did this back on April the 20. 
24th in 2015 against the Washington Wizards in the first round. DeRozan is also the first person in franchise history to record five steals in the playoff game. He did this earlier on this year during the playoffs against the Milwaukee Bucks on April the 27th in the first round. DeRozan also leads the franchise in total playoff points scored with a total of 890 points, which will increase the longer he plays with the Raptors. DeRozan also leads the franchise with the most playoff points scored in a single playoff, scoring 418 points. DeRozan also leads the franchise in total points scored of all time with a total of 11,456 points. DeRozan is also the first Raptor to ever score 40 points in a home opening game. He did this against the Detroit Pistons and the Raptors went on to win that game 109-91. Two days later against the Cleveland Cavaliers, he scored 32 points but the Raptors lost 94-91. He beat Carter's record of scoring 65 points through two season opening games with a total of 72 points scored through two season opening games. Last year on October the 31st against the Denver Nuggets, DeRozan scored 33 points. DeRozan became the first Raptor to score three 30 point games to begin a season. On November the 2nd, 2016, DeRozan scored 40 points, tying Mike James' franchise record with four consecutive 30 point games. He passed the franchise record two days later, scoring 34 points against the Miami Heat, and the Raptors went on to win the game 96 to 87. DeRozan was the first person to score 30 plus points per game in five straight games since Michael Jordan did it for six games back in the 1986 to 1987 season. On November the 12th, 2016, DeRozan scored 33 points against the New York Knicks for the eighth 30 point game in nine games. He became the fourth NBA player to score 30 plus points in eight of the first nine games of a season. Other players to do this were Michael Jordan, World B Free, and Tiny Archibald. On November the 16th, 2016, he scored 34 points against the Golden State Warriors. DeRozan is the first player to have nine 30 point games in his team's first 11 games since Michael Jordan did it back in the 1987 to 1988 season. Earlier on this year, last season, on April the 7th, DeRozan scored 38 points against the Miami Heat. DeRozan broke Vince Carter's record, scoring his 31st 30 point game in the season. DeRozan was also the first Raptor to be named the player of the week three times in one season. From a franchise record standpoint, DeRozan edges Vince Carter 2-1. to one. Regular season and playoff success because of Vince Carter, the team was able to set league attendance records and also make it to the playoffs for the first couple of times in franchise history and to also have some of the best season records the franchise has seen at the time. In Vince Carter's first playoff appearance in his sophomore season, he averaged 19.3 points per game, 1 steal per game and 1.3 blocks per game and 6.3 assists per game and 6 rebounds per game. But the Raptors lost to New York Knicks 3-0 in the first round. Back then, the NBA used to have a best of 5 series in the first round, but that rule changed in the 2003 playoffs, where teams play a best of of seven series. The winner has to win four games still present to this day. The next year in Carter's third year, the Raptors made it to the playoffs again where they would beat the New York Knicks in the first round, getting their revenge from the previous season. But unfortunately, they lost to the Philadelphia 76ers in the second round in the conference semifinals by a missed buzzer beater shot by Vince Carter. If he made the shot, they would have advanced to the Eastern Conference Finals. Throughout the 2001 playoffs, Vince Carter averaged 27.3 points per game, 1.7 steals per game, 1.7 blocks per game, 4.7 assists per game, and 6.5 rebounds per game. These were the only two times that Vince Carter went to the playoffs being on the Toronto Raptors. DeRozan never made it to the playoffs until his fifth season, which would be the 2014 playoffs. This was the first time that the Toronto Raptors made it to the playoffs since 2008, since the Chris Bosh era. During the 2013 to 2014 regular season, the Toronto Raptors had 48 wins and 34 losses, which was the best regular season record in franchise history. The Raptors lost to the Brooklyn Nets in seven games in the 2014 playoffs. During the series, DeMar DeRozan averaged 23.9 points per game, 1.1 steals per game, and 0.3 blocks per game, and 3.6 assists per game, and 4.1 rebounds per game. During the next season, the 2014 to 2015 season, the Raptors had their best start in franchise history, with a record of 24 wins and 8 losses, leading the Eastern Conference Finals by the end of 2014. During this season, the Raptors broke their own record from the previous season winning 49 games. The Raptors were able to make it to the playoffs again in 2015, but they got swept by the Washington Wizards in the first round. In that series, DeRozan Rosen averaged 20.3 points per game, 1.5 steals per game, 0 blocks per game, 5.8 assists per game, and 6.3 rebounds per game. In the 2015 to 2016 season, it was the greatest season for the Toronto Raptors in franchise history. They opened up a new practice facility called the Biosteel Center, an exhibition place on February the 10th, 2016. Plus, the Raptors hosted the first NBA All-Star Weekend in franchise history. This was one of the greatest NBA All-Star Weekends I've ever seen since watching basketball. The Raptors also had the best record in franchise history, with a record of 56 
six wins and 26 losses. This was the first time that they had the fourth best record throughout the whole NBA out of all the season records in franchise history and the highest rank in franchise history. They were ranked second in the East. They were ranked right behind the Cavaliers. In the first round, the Raptors were pushed to the limit by the Indiana Pacers. The series went to seven games, but the Raptors won. This was the first series that they've won in 15 years since the 2001 NBA playoffs during the Vince Carter era. They were also pushed to the limit by the Miami Heat in the second round, the conference semifinals. They also won in seven games. I don't want to hear that the Raptors only won because Chris Bosh was out of the playoffs due to having a blood clot in his leg. I'm saying this because in the next round, the Raptors nearly forced the series to go to seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals against a heavy loaded Cleveland Cavaliers squad with the best player in the world on it. And we all know who that person is, LeBron James. The Cleveland Cavaliers went on to win the championship that season, beating the greatest season team of all time that made a lot of history during the season, the Golden State Warriors. Golden State were the first team to win 24 games in a row without any losses to open up the season. Plus, they had the greatest season record of all time, beating the Chicago Bulls record of 72 wins and 10 losses that Chicago Bulls set back in the 1995-1996 season during the Michael Jordan era. Golden State won 73 games and lost 9 games. The Golden State Warriors cruised to the playoffs until they versed the Oklahoma City Thunder. Golden State ended up being down 3-1 in the series, but they came back and won and advanced to the NBA Finals. In the NBA Finals, the Cleveland Cavaliers were down 3-1 to the Golden State Warriors, but they came back to beat the Golden State Warriors in 7 games. This was the first team in NBA history to come back in the NBA Finals from being down 3-1. That's my point. If the Raptors can push a 6 game series against that Cleveland Cavaliers squad that went on to win the championship that year, they would definitely still beat the Miami Heat if Chris Bosh was playing. So there's no argument. That was the first time that the Toronto Raptors went to the Eastern Conference Finals in franchise history. Throughout the 2016 NBA playoffs, DeRozan averaged 20.9 points per game, 1.1 steals per game, 0.2 blocks per game, 2.7 assists per game, and 4.2 rebounds per game. Earlier on this year, last season, the Raptors were able to make it to the NBA playoffs. This was the fourth consecutive time. This was the first time in franchise history that the Toronto Raptors made it to the playoffs for four seasons in a row. DeMar DeRozan edges Vince Carter in this category as well. 2-2. Two, two. As you can see, while the franchise is in DeMar DeRozan's hands, he's had more success in the regular season and in the playoffs than Vince had when he was a franchise player. Awards Vince Carter is also the first person in Raptors franchise history to win the Rookie of the Year award. No one has done it since. Vince Carter is also the first person in Raptors franchise history to be named the Slam Dunk Champion until former Raptor Terrence Ross also won the Slam Dunk Contest back in 2013. DeRozan participated in the Slam Dunk Contest in 2010 and 2011, but he failed to win twice. Vince Carter edges DeRozan in this category. 3-2 off the court accomplishments. I felt like I had to add this category because due to a player's basketball success, it opens up doors for them in other areas. Vince Carter was on the cover of NBA Live 2004. The only covers that Vince wasn't on was the NBA Live 2004 cover exclusive for Spain and France. A player by the name of Raul Lopez was on the cover for Spain and Tony Parker was on the cover for France. Vince was also on the cover of the video game Inside Drive 2002, which was an Xbox exclusive. Vince also appeared in the movie Like Mike and fabulous music video for the song This Is My party and appeared in one episode of the TV show Moesha. A documentary for Vince Carter came out called The Carter Effect by film director Sean Menard that premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival about Carter's impact in Toronto last month in September. It brought many athletes and basketball players to town, from LeBron James to Chris Bosh and many more. DeRozan accomplished something great as well. He was on the cover for NBA 2K18 exclusively for Canada. Just like how Raul Lopez was on the NBA Live 2004 cover exclusively for Spain and Tony Parker was on the NBA Live 2004 cover exclusively for France. DeRozan is the first athlete to be featured on the cover of NBA 2K for the first Canadian edition ever. He's the first Raptor to do this. Plus, there's many more great things to come for DeRozan. Overall, Vince Carter is the better individual player, but DeMar DeRozan is the better Raptor. The Raptors have been more successful as an organization while DeMar has been the franchise player. DeMar is going to continue to set franchise records the longer he plays here. There's certain records he can't break, but he's broken most of them already. I think it's time we put respect on his name and the league too, because he's done a lot and like I said before, there's more great things to come. It's Carter's awards that edged him out while tallying the numbers while comparing. And like I said before, if Vince Carter never got injured, he could have done spectacular things with the Raptors, but that's not the case. And that's one of the biggest what ifs ever. But that's it for the video guys. Please like it, subscribe, and comment below what you think. Do you agree or do you disagree? And hit that notification button. Peace. I eat my French toast bag of French girl, tell her, let's go. Watch me explode like our mentos mixed with that coke. Moving like a groupie, so I back up.